Chapter 3, Mishnah 1. The previous chapter discussed the minimum amounts necessary for parts of a body or remains of a corpse to transmit tuma when they are touched or carried or through ohel. The chapter addressed whatever parts of two corpses combine to make up the minimum amount that transmits tuma. The Mishnah. Hold on, I dropped my glasses. The Mishnah. Drop them again. Let's try this again. The Mishnah. Now it goes on to discuss whether two pieces of one corpse combine to make up the minimum amount that transmits tuma. We now turn to the words of the Mishnah. If any part of a corpse that is large enough to transmit tuma through ohel, for example, because ice of flesh from a corpse was divided in two so that each piece does not contain the minimum size to transmit tuma, and both pieces were brought to a house. Rebbe Dossi Ben Harkanas rules that the people and utensils in the house are Tahor because two pieces do not combine to reach the minimum amount of that that transmits Tuma through Ohel. But the sages rule that whatever is in the house becomes Tame because the separate pieces do combine to make up the minimum amount uh, to transmit Tuma through Ohel. The dispute between Rabbi Dossi and Sages is not limited to Tuma transmitted by Ohel. It also applies to other ways Tuma Smace can be transmitted, touching, carrying, and even to touching or carrying a novella. The Mishnah lists other cases in which Rabbi Dossi and the Sages disagree, some involving Tuma Smace and others involving Tuma Snevelas. How so? In which other cases do Rabbi Dossi and the sages disagree? 1. If someone touches two half kazayas pieces of novella, 2. Or if he carries them, i.e. a kazayas of novella was divided into two pieces and someone either touched both pieces or carried both pieces at the same time without touching them. And in the case of a corpse which transmits Tuma through oil as well, there are another four cases. Three, if someone touches a half kazai's piece of flesh from a corpse and at the same time forms an oil over another half kazai's piece. Four, or he touches a half kazai's piece of flesh from a corpse and at the same time another half kazai's piece of flesh from a corpse forms an oil over him. Five, or he forms an ohel over two half kazai's pieces. Six, or he forms an oil over a half kazai's piece of flesh from a corpse, and at the same time another half kazai's piece of flesh from a corpse forms an oil over him. In all these cases, Rabbi Dossi Ben Harkinus rules that a person remains Tahor because the two half kazai's pieces do not combine to make up the minimum amount of kazai's that is needed to transmit the tuma. But the sages rule that he is Tame. According to the sages, the two pieces do combine when both of them transmit to men in the same way, which involves touching with touching, carrying with carrying, or all with oho, and even touching with oho when there is less than a tefach of space between the oho and the tuma. The Mishnah cites two cases in which the sages agree with Rabbi Dossi, Rabbi Dossi, that two Afghanized pieces do not combine to transmit Tuma. However, if someone touches the Afghanized piece of flesh from a corpse, and at the same time something else forms an oval over both him and another Afghanized piece, as there's a tefach of space between the board and the piece of corpse, or he forms an oil over a half a kasai's piece of flesh from a corpse, and there is no tefach of space between him and the corpse. And at the same time, something else forms an oil over both him and another half a kasai's piece, and there is a tefach of space between the oil and the piece of the corpse. Tahor. Even the sages agree that the person remains Tahor because the pieces do not combine to transmit Tuma through different categories. Thus, since in these ca cases, he touched one piece and was in an ohel along with the other piece, or he formed an ohel without a tefach of space over his head 
and was in an ohel with a tefach of space with the other piece, the two pieces do not combine. The next Tana, however, holds that the sages do not agree even in the last two cases. Rabbi Meir said, even here, only Rabbi Dosi Ben Harkonas rules that the person is Tahor, while the sages rule he is Tame. According to Rabbi Meir, the sages hold that any type of Tumas Ohel, even if there is a Tefach of space, is a form of touching a corpse. Thus, any type of Tumas Ohel being under the same roof as a corpse, forming an all of a corpse, or a corpse that forms an all of a person. <clears throat> can combine with touching to transmit Tuma. Therefore, a person who touched a half sized piece and was in an ohel with another piece, and a person who formed an ohel over one piece and was in an ohel with another piece, are Tame, since both Tumas, touching ohel or ohel ohel, are in the same category, and the two pieces combine to make them Tame. Rabbi Nair continues, in all cases, the sages hold that two undersized pieces combine to transmit Tuma, except for a case of touching and with carrying, i.e., one who touches a half sized piece and at the same time carries another half sized piece, or carrying with ohel, e.g., one who carries a half sized piece and at the same time is, an, uh, is in an ohel with another half sized piece. Since these cases involve two completely different ways of transmitting Tuma, Touch and carrying, carrying all hell. Even according to Rabbi Meir, the sages agree that the two pieces do not combine. The Mishnah summarizes the sages' opinion. This is the rule. Whenever two undersized pieces transmit Tuma in ways that are from the same category, i.e., they both transmit Tuma through touching, both through carrying, or both through oho, they combine form the required amount to make the person Tame. But if they transmit Tuma in ways that are from two different categories, since as touching with carrying is considered, a, since as touching with carrying or carrying with ohel, the person remains tahor, since they do not combine.